Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about AC steady state analysis and we start with a new topic about transformer circuits. And this is our example number one. So what we have is a transformer circuit given here and there are following parameters R1, R2, L1 and L2 and there is also a voltage source given VG. VG is shown here and there is R1 and L1 which is a model of the output impedance of this uh, voltage source. There, the, there is a transformer here which is assumed to be ideal and there's a load R2 and L2 which is and the model for the uh, load and we have the turns ratio of MP divided by NS which is 8 this is actually here and what we have is the following a question calculate the following parameters in time domain the primary voltage VP which is shown here the secondary voltage VS the primary current which is flowing in this loop and the secondary current. So we need the currents and the voltages of primary and the secondary side. That's actually the whole business for this uh, example. What we know is this is a steady state analysis. So we have one specific frequency, which is here 1000 radian per second. So I can assume that we work with one frequency and I can use phasers and polar notation and that kind of uh, uh, information is very valuable in this analysis. And what I know, need to know is also, do I have to calculate some reactances? Yes, because I have the L1 and L2. So let's start first with that because I need them in the further analysis. So I will first do that. That is my first step. So I will first calculate XL1, which is the familiar expression omega times L1, which stands to the power 3 times the 4 millihenries, which will result in 4 ohms. And I will do the similar for the L1 which is omega times L2, which will give 1000 times. And this 100 micro Henry's will be 10 to the power minus four, and it will be 0 0.1 ohms. Okay, that's actually done for XL1 and XL2, which is important for the further analysis. What I do next, what I will do next, is using Kirchhoff voltage law here in this loop, and Kirchhoff voltage law for this loop, because I have done all of the unknowns, IP and the VP will uh, show in the equation also VS and the IS. So there's actually those four unknowns will result there. So let's write down. So I have the following. So V, I will do the, everything in vectors. So in the of notation, VG is equal to the impedance R1 plus XL1. That's the impedance, source impedance times IP plus the V. That's actually the expression for the secondary for the first uh, uh, equation for the primary loop. And for the secondary loop, I can say the Vs will be equal to the R2 plus JXL2 times Is. Okay, so let me make this equation number one and then make this equation number two. So if I now substitute the values I have determined and also given. This one is given as 2, this one is given as 0.5, and I have calculated the reactance of the inductor. So I have the following Vg will be equal to 2 plus J4 times IP plus Vp. And for the second one, Vs is equal to 0.5 plus J0.1 times I. Of S. Okay, I have still too much unknown, unknowns to calculate the uh, specific values. So what I need to know is also other uh, equations. I have to set up other equations. I can do the following. Because it's a transformer that is ideal, I can use the transformer formulas. So which are the transformer formulas. So it's important here to use them also. And what are they? We have, of course, the voltage of the primary side divided by the voltage of the secondary side, which will be the MP divided by NS. I have also the current of the primary side divided by the current of the secondary side, which will be the other way around. It will be NS divided by MP. These are very important. I know this expression, this is 8, and this is be 1 over 8. So I can rewrite this, if I want, as V. P will be MP divided by NS 
times Vs, and I can use the following, Is is equal to Mp divided by Ns times Ip. If you substitute the given turns ratio, you will have Vp is equal to 8 times Vs, and this is Is will be 8 times Vp. So I can also denote this with equation number 3 and this is equation number 4. Okay, what I will do next is the following. I have an expression here in Ips and Vp. I can use this expression and use it here. So I can substitute equation 3 and equation 1. I can also do the similar for equation 2. So I can substitute equation 4, which is actually here shown in Is, in equation 2. And then I have an expression with other unknowns, which will help me also in the further analysis. So let's do that. So next, next step is the following. Vg, so I start with equation 1. Vg is 2 plus j4 times ip, and vp is given as 8 times vs. And I will use in the next step vs expression, I will substitute it in this expression. So the following is the vs. So substitute an equation 4 and equation 2, which will be vs is equal to 0 0.5 plus j. 0 0.1 times is but is is eight times ip so i will eight i will have eight times ip okay let's uh, give a formula numbers also for this so this is equation number five this is equation number six i will now substitute equation number six in equation number five that is actually the following step then i have the following Vg is equal to 2 plus J4 times Ip plus 8 times, and I will make it clear, it's 0 0.5 plus J, 0 0.1 times 8 times the primary current Ip. Now, if I now rewrite this and simplify the expression and add the real parts and imaginary parts, I will do that in uh, several steps. So Vg is equal to still this 2 plus J4 times Ip. Let me leave it like, like, like this. And this one, 8 times 8 is 64. So this will be 64 times 0 0.5 will be 32. And times the same expression. So 64 times 0 0.1 will be 6.1 for J. So I will have the following. 32 plus J, 64 quantity times ip now if i now simplify this taking the real parts and imagined parts together so i have 2 plus 32 4 plus 6.44 i have the imagined and the real parts together what i have is the following 34 plus j 10.4 times whole ip i know now the expression for the ipy because i have also the expression for v of g this is actually the voltage source which is actually shown here it's 240 volts and with phase of zero degrees so i can use the polar notation for that so i can i will move with blue i will continue with blue so i have the 240 volts in zero degrees and i can also express this rectangular expression of the uh, uh, expression here and convert this to polar notation such that I can divide this this uh, term to this term. So I have the expression for this. I will convert this to polar notation, which is actually uh, 35.6. is actually very basic uh, algebra. We have already dealt this with in the phasers and complex numbers video. So uh, I will advise you to consult that uh, video. So what we have is the 35.6 and the phase of 70 degrees also in bracket and we have now parentheses I mean and then times IP. So let's calculate IP. What is IP? IP is this one divided by that one and you divide the magnitudes and you subtract the phases. So you will have 6.74 and the phase will be minus 70 degrees and in ampere. So I have already one of the nouns in, of course, in polar notation and phasers, but I can convert this very easily to the time domain, but I will do it later on. So 
If I have everything, IS, VS, VP, and I will make a table and I will go from one side to the other side and I will have a complete view of the phases in the time domain operation. So I have now the following step. IP already is determined here, so I can use the IP here in this equation number four to calculate IS. So let's do that. So let's move to this side. So what I, what I have is the following. Then the IS will be eight times what I have here, the 6.74 minus the phase of seven minus 70 degrees will result in 53. 0.9 minus the same phase because this phase is not affected by the multiplication so that's actually also done what is the next step now since i know is i can use the is expression here and i will always convert this also again in polar notation and i can determine vs so let's continue with that so vs will be 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.1 and then the expression for the current is minus 57 degrees now let's convert this into the polar notation which is again straightforward operation will be 0 0.51 phase of 11 degrees and then times the current 53.9 and the phase of 7 degrees. Now, if you do the math correctly, again, you multiply the magnitudes and you also add the phases. So what you get is 27.5 volts and then minus 6 degrees. Now, we're almost done because the last one will, will be calculated, the VP, which is the primary voltage, using equation number 3. So that will be VP is... 8 times what I have calculated here, which is 27.5, same phase. Again, only the magnitudes will be affected and the phases will be exactly the same. So I will can have minus 6 degrees. And this will result in 220 volts and a minus 6 degrees. As you can see, I have four unknowns, but given, of course, in polar notation. So let's make a table of this. This will be handy. So... I will make a phaser here and time domain here. So what I have is the following. I have the IP, which is 6.74 phase minus 70 degrees in amperes. And for IS, I have 53.9 phase minus 70 degrees. For the primary voltage, I have 22 phase minus 6 degrees. And for the secondary voltage, I have the 27.5 phase minus 6 degrees in volts. If I now transform the polar notation, the complex expression, in time domain, what do I have? I have the following. I the primary current as a function as a function of time will be 6.74 in cosine exactly the same frequency as given as 1000 radian per second but this time we have the phase of minus 70 degrees that's actually the expression in time domain in a similar fashion we can do the secondary current which is the 53.9 cosine 1000 t minus same phase minus 70 degrees now let's move on for the primary which is 220 cosine the same frequency 1000 radians per second and which is minus 6 which is in volts and the last one is the secondary voltages voltage 27.5 cosine 1000 radian minus 6 degrees and also in volts and actually these are the four unknowns from the uh, exercise for this example, and we are actually done. Let's look at a, uh, some specific uh, subject in more detail, which is actually just for extra information, but it's very handy. Let's look at the power factor. What is actually the definition of the power factor, PF? 
The power factor PF is the following. This is the cosine of the difference of the phase of the voltage and the phase of the current. So if I have the phase of the voltage and also the phase of the current and subtract them in this manner, I can use this formula to determine the uh, power factor. But I, have, I need also to uh, make clear if it is a lagging or leading. So if this is a lagging or leading, how can we determine this? The phase of the voltage here is minus 6 degrees. And the phase of the current is minus 17 degrees, which is shown here. And it is for minus 6 degrees. And I can conclude from these two that the phase of the voltage is larger than the phase of the current. Thus, for this, thus for this system is, thus this system will have or have a lagging PF because the current phase is smaller than the voltage phase. This voltage, voltage is leading the current or the current is lagging the voltage. So the definition for the lagging or leading is determined actually by this definition. Okay, so this, this system will have a lagging power factor. So if I want to calculate the power factor, just have extra information. So the power factor will be cosine of minus 6 minus minus 70. As you can see, it's a positive phase. That will be the cosine of uh, 11 degrees. So cosine of 11, 11 degrees, and it will be 0 0.98 lagging. And this is for this situation, just an extra note, so that you can see what the power factor will be in uh, using the time domain expressions. All right, it's for example number one. Of course, we will continue with the other examples, making the level a little bit uh, higher and also looking at other uh, uh, issues like designing, determining the components. In this time, this time we had all of the components, we have to determine the currents and the voltages, so we will make the examples a little bit different, but you can see the situation also from different angles and different perspectives. All right, now, thank you very much again for your uh, attention. I hope it will be clear for this video and for all other videos so keep in touch and don't forget to like and to share and I'll see you next time and have a nice day